Hello and welcome to FEM Expert. Today we will present you a basic tutorial in which we will show you how to plot results in ANSYS, commonly known as the POST26 menu. Well, for today's tutorial we will begin with an already um, completed and co already created model. The idea of plotting results in ANSYS is pretty convenient, especially when interpreting stuff. You can create reports, you can get images, pictures, figures. It is quite uh, good and it's not as hard as some people might think it is. So what we'll do right now is uh, I'm going to show you how to do it. Well, the first thing you have to do is in order to be able to plot results, you have to have more than one result. By default, uh, this is not the case when you're doing a static analysis. When you're doing a static analysis, here we have the T-junction that we previously used in another tutorial, embedded at, the, at both ends, and we have the, the forces on the Y direction at this end. So the first thing you have to do is go to solution, to an analysis type. If you're doing a static analysis you will have to do this if you're doing a transient analysis that would not be the case and if you're doing some other types of analysis we'll explain how you do the stuff in other tutorials so you go to solution control and here on this menu well the first thing you'll have is the time to end of your low step which is going to be one then you need more than one sub step because you need more than one point to plot the variation along the time of the whatever parameter you are plotting. So here let's see, let's say we will have 10, 10 and 10, so we have 10 for sure. And then here on the right, you gotta be careful because the frequency of how many times ANSYS uh, rises uh, the items to the result file, he only usually writes the last sub step. This is this is just for convenience, uh, it's the way it works. Here you have many sub steps that so you're calculating at every point these things, but then you're writing the file with the last sub step only. So, what you have to do is go here, you can select different things like every end sub step, if you have very big models, end steps, end numbers of sub steps, or what we'll go, we'll do right now is write every sub step. So what ANSYS will do is simulate one second, split a second in 10 sub-steps, and write the result for every sub-step. Okay, so after we do this, we hit the thing, then you go to your model, solve, current LS, and we solve our current model. It will take a little longer, because if you go here, you'll see we have the output window, you'll see this there, there are low steps one and sub step one two three four and so on so it takes a little longer than your regular solution once you have completed this you click okay as i said the the beam was embedded at the core at the end and having the force apply at the pre-end so then to plot the results well it's a, a little bit tricky with the main the way the menu works but it's very simple you have to go to time his post-processing having the results file, this window will open and then you have to work with this window all the time. The first thing is you have to move the window to be able to pick stuff or see your image. Then you click on the add data. You select the data that you want to see. I'm going to see the, the, the display, component displacement on Y. You can put the name here. We can just leave it by default or you can put UI on UI on node one. You hit apply. I'm gonna select a node very close to the embedment. We hit apply. We're gonna we're gonna leave the names by default so we don't get complicated by them. But you you got the idea of changing the variable names. We're gonna pick up another one in the middle. There's more nodes, whatever node. Okay, we're gonna pick up a third one by the middle of this. Apply. And we're gonna pick up one at the very end. I'm gonna hit OK. Sometimes hitting OK might give you a problem, so I usually recommend hitting Apply all the time when you're doing the things. 
So you'll see is for each one of these variables that we created, we have in the variable list where we have the time and then the displacement in E and it tells you what every item does. It gives you the minimum value, the maximum value. Here you can also tell him where, which is going to be on the x-axis. And then you can start plotting graphics. For example, we select the variable and then you hit this graph data image here. And this is what happens to that particular node, the displacement on the y-axis, it goes from minus 0 0.8, 10, uh, multiplied by 10 to minus 6 to minus 8, minus 0.8 to minus 8, okay. You can choose another one or you can choose with the shift, holding the shift and selecting many, you can select many variables. So as you can see, well, the, the models and everything that we're doing is linear, so the variation in the time is linear. This might not be the case if you're doing transients or using different materials, but the idea here is to understand how to plot graphics. Let's say the last three. The last three, one of the nodes was in the middle of the beam, so there's very small displacement. The other one was by the middle of the beam, longitudinal beam, so there's a bigger displacement, and then the third one, it already starts with a small displacement at 0 0.1 and has a very long, very big displacement at the ending time. Here, if you want to go to the model, you have to go to plot, elements, or models, or anything that you want. So, the other thing that we can do here is to create our own variables. You can make, for example, you can call something a difference and here we can pick up you can do for example this one minus this one plus the third one plus or minus the fourth one I don't know let's say we want to calculate this thing you hit enter and it says calculate it and it'll give you the value because these are linear things you will have also a diff linear variation you can plot this with the shift with the other variables you can see well you can get whatever data you want so it's not very complicated and very helpful to interpret results I'm gonna show you a couple of different things you can for example change the y-axis. The problem with the, with this doing this is that you have to have this, this window that you have to constantly move it back and forth and so on. So here for example we want to put this value as the x-axis. So we're gonna plot the difference based on the x-axis of the uy first node. It's also a linear variable but as you can see, this changes significantly. So by doing that, you can, by doing these things, you can interpret a various results. You don't have to get, uh, you don't have to export stuff and start creating graphs in, graphs in Excel or other programs or whatever diadem or whatever program you want. It's very helpful when you need to get the data. You can also list the data. You can go here and list the data and you'll have the values of each thing, each node, what variable you're plotting, and their values that are being used for this thing. Actually, you could save, print, or copy to output this file, so it's very useful. You can get accustomed to it by just touching things and testing and doing different things. And when you're finished, just closed. As I said, the graphics. To go back to the model, you have to go to the plot and get the model. So, well, there's a quite a few, um, a few things that you can do with this menu and these options. So, this is it for today's tutorial. I hope uh, we would like to thank you for your attention, and we hope you enjoy this presentation. For more tutorials, please follow us on the on our community and on the social media. And also please consider making a donation if the, our material has been helpful for you.